Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be the video on the Nucanic uh, Meta line that I was talking about. Um, I'm just going to call it the Meta. Uh, you guys can call it whatever you want. This is the SFT version. I haven't really seen a whole lot on the SFT. I decided to go with that over the SFX. Uh, the price difference is only like $30, so it really doesn't make any sense to grab one over the other just for price reasons alone. Um, just a heads up, this is the consumer version uh, as it comes in the little kit here. This is not going to be the influencer version. So the influencer version is going to come with a whole bunch of extra stuff. You know, Canic sends that out to bigger YouTube channels. Um, me just being a small channel, I went into my local FFL and I grabbed this just by my own accord. So uh, if the people at Canic see this, um, you guys are awesome. I mean, great, great Canic. I've had the SFX in the past. Uh, I ended up selling that to a family member and he still uses it. It was his first pistol. So um, I'm very happy with their guns. I've never really had a problem with them. And uh, so far, very, very impressed. So let me pause this real quick. I'll open this up, uh, get kind of the stuff spread out and show you guys what makes it tick. All right. So now that we have that open, you have all your cleaning supplies that it's gonna come with. You have your punch. Uh, the little gun up there, I'll go over kind of separately toward the end of the video. I think it's uh, kind of detail oriented. So I figure, you know, we'll do that kind of separately. I know you guys just wanna see the gun, but gonna go over this as a whole. Uh, right up here, you have your thicker back strap, uh, your punch, your little tool with all the bits in the grip. I'm going to have your brush and uh, I forget what they call it, but the little thing that you stick the patches on to clean it. So up oh, nestled in here, what is that? Just like that. You have all your books, you know, uh, manual, all that kind of stuff. Throw that off to the side. And then you have the gun, uh, the holster. I have the magazine in it, the shorter magazine, the 18 rounder. And then you're actually going to have a speed loader and your 20 round magazine. So I know it says 18 on the back, but it's plus two base plate on it. And this speed loader seems like it's actually uh, fairly decent. So I'm pretty happy that they come with those. Um, I don't know how much I'm actually gonna use it. I kind of do things a little bit out of the norm as far as like doing things by hand, but that is what's gonna come on that side. And then over on this side, you're gonna have your um, little plates for you know, micro red dots and RMRs and whatever you're going to put on top. You have a trigger lock, not even going to bother taking that out, and your uh, little magwell here. One thing I do want to go over with the magwell, and I will show you guys real quick when we take the gun actually out, is with the 18-round uh, magazine, without the extended base plate, it is a little bit difficult to get the magazine up and in, uh, just with the edges uh, coming into contact with each other. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. Um, it is a little bit difficult to get that up and in, but it is possible. So, for everybody wondering, uh, yes, it is possible. It's just a little more on the, the difficult side, like I said. So, not really going to go over the holster. I mean, it is what it is. Um, you guys can... Kind of base your own judgments. It does index on this area of the gun, and it is reversible, and it does have a screw there to adjust tension. So you can flip this over, make it inside or outside the waistband, and then you have what everybody's waiting for: the actual pistol itself. Mind the electrical tape. Like I said, you know I like to cover up serial numbers just for video purposes. Um, just kind of the way I roll. So drop a mag here. Make sure that the gun's empty. I would hope it would be empty because I've never had ammunition in this particular gun. Um, it's built like a tank. I mean, it's not heavy or anything, but it just, you can tell it's solid build quality. It's, it's really, really nice. Um, one thing I did notice right off the bat was the sight on the rear. It is kind of canted forward a little bit. It didn't have that um, kind of ramped rear sight that you would normally have in the, you know, original TP9 SFX or anything like that. Uh, moving forward, you do have uh, kind of a chamfered front here. You do have that little lip uh, that kind of cants in. Uh, on the rail up front, the cuts are actually deeper. I know people are actually having problems with the uh, lights that they had 
were kind of rocking back and forth. So Canik took a look at that and they just cut the rail a little bit deeper into the polymer. Seems to be working out for everybody. Uh, you do have a slide uh, release and catch on both sides of the gun. And uh, you do have a bit of a flared magwell. And you can see you have your adjustable or replaceable backstrap back there. That's where that punch right here would come in handy. Uh, everything on the gun can be taken apart with that punch. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I might do it in the future. Pistols are kind of, you know, uh, a little bit new to me. So I'm not really fully confident with doing that and knowing that I can get it back apart. So, or back together rather. So, um, we will kind of see what happens with that going forward. Maybe I'll make a video on it. Maybe not. Uh, as far as the magwell goes, I'm not going to put the screw in it or anything. Um, it is lined up, but I will show you guys what I mean. Grab this magazine here. As you can see, it is the standard magazine. So when you push that back in, you can see it contacts and then goes forward, but it does click in. So if you want to use it with the magwell, you can. Um, you just may have issues if you're trying to, you know, be quick about things but if you look empty magazine it's obviously the one with the plus two base plate it clicks right in no problem so perfect excuse you can get yourself a plus two base plate for the other one just make them both 20 rounders or you could just pop this off and just not use it so kind of up to you guys um we will go over the trigger real quick but real fast i just wanted to mention the cutouts in the side of the gun and the cutout underneath the trigger uh, guard, they are really, really, really nice. Um, as far as grip on the gun, you're up super, super high on the gun. It's, it's hard to hard to kind of show on camera, but you're actually you're really, really high up on the gun, and it feels nice. It feels like um, like your hand is in the gun and not on it. If that makes sense to motorcycle riders, it will make sense um, when I say that kind of thing. So. Obviously, we're going to check this one more time, just make sure it's empty, just for safety, and I will go over the trigger with you guys. Uh, so you're going to have uh, that blade safety in the middle, so obviously if it gets hung up on something, you're not going to be able to pull the trigger unless that's pushed in. So if you push that in, uh, you're obviously going to be able to move the trigger back. So you have a good amount of take up, a little bit of creep there, and then there's your wall and your brake. So I'll do a reset real quick. Cock that back. There's your reset. And there's your brake. Trigger on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Uh, best trigger of really any gun I've had so far. Uh, box stock, anyway. Uh, Freedom Smith does make triggers for these, but honestly, um, the factory trigger is, is pretty decent. So I'm not going to use it for competition use. I bought it kind of as a range toy, so I'll be using it for that. And, um, I think I'm just going to leave it box stock. I don't even think I'm going to put a red dot on it. Uh, I need to get better with iron sights on pistols anyway, so that's just kind of going to be how it is. So uh, taking this thing apart, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pull down on these two tabs on either side of the gun. Bring your slide back just a little bit. And then the top of the gun is just going to slide right off. Obviously, you guys know how to take it apart from there. There's all your guts. There's a slide. So, I don't know if you guys can see it. These two nubs right here on either side of the gun are going to coincide with these two cutouts. So you don't need to slide it on forward. You're going to have issues with that. You'll need to take it back apart. So we're just going to line those up real quick. It's hard to do this through the camera. There we go. So basically just kind of place that on top. And it's already back on. So as you can see right here, you have your... Um, your sights, just three dot sights, very, very nice, they're very bright, uh, I don't mind them at all, and you're going to have your uh, striker indicator back there, so if you pull the trigger, obviously gun's empty, pointed in a safe direction, striker dropped, and there you go. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, um, really, really nice gun, um, I'm super happy with it, my only complaint out of everything um, is... I don't know if you can see that or hear that, just the back strap, I had taken it off and put the thicker one back on. 
Uh, it is a little bit loose, but when you're holding it in your hand, you really don't notice it. So if that's my biggest complaint, then they're doing pretty decent. So I'm going to put this back in the holster. Uh, I usually just store it with an empty magazine in it. It's not really going to do any kind of harm. Always safety check it before we pull it back out. And just real quick before we close out, I am going to show you guys what is providing I can get it out. What's going on with this little guy? So this is actually your tool for like the cutout and you know kind of stuff like that. Um, you also have your hardware in there. There it is. You're gonna have all your screws, stuff like that. Um, one thing I do want to make mention of is I was awfully confused at what screw to use with the magwell. It's gonna be this little guy. As you can see, it's got the um, taper on it, so that's basically it. I'll throw this in here real quick for you guys. And that's basically how you're going to use that. There's a little magnet in there that kind of retains that. Again, trying to do this on camera is a little bit harder. Um, I don't think they're going to keep doing this kind of thing. Uh, it is cool, but it... It's kind of tricky to use, to be honest with you. Um, it's not as intuitive as a screwdriver, but again, you're going to use it once or twice, and it's kind of more of, hey, check this out. Um, it's basically one of those extra things that Canik just kind of goes above and beyond for. They're known for that. They're known for listening to their customers, which is rare these days. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell, and getting these bits back into here is going to be kind of a nightmare. There we go. All right. So they're basically back in there. Um, like I said, you know, you got to kind of wiggle things around. There's just enough room for basically everything. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, the great gun for the money. I mean, you, you really can't go any better than that uh, as far as a factory trigger and, um, you know, the whole kit and all that kind of stuff that it comes with. You really couldn't ask for a whole lot more. Uh, one thing I would really like to see in the future is um, just like different colors and stuff. Uh, these guns are great in the tan or peanut butter color, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they look phenomenal. But I think this gun would be over the top with like a gunmetal gray and black, just like the SFX, the, the original, the TP9. Um, I think that would look phenomenal. But that's kind of a small gripe, you know. Um, I don't mind the, the tan really not that bad at all so that's basically it in a nutshell uh kind of a longer video sorry about that guys but just wanted to go over this kind of thoroughly uh we're gonna bring this up to the range i'm gonna do a couple of magazines first uh without filming it because i know other people are having you know um just break in stuff you know these are kind of finicky guns until they get broken in so a lot of people are saying put 100 200 rounds through it and then do the video on it because you're gonna have a couple of hang-ups or something like that um, but other than that, that is the Canic, uh, Meta SFT and, uh, hope you guys like it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.